Hey everyone and welcome back to the next episode in how to build a smart home cheaply series. Today we're going to be focusing on how to get Home Assistant to interact with Google Assistant. As it stands right now, Home Assistant can interact with probably close to 2,000 devices. However, there are some specific things that Home Assistant can't interact with that Google can. And so what we want to do is be able to get Home Assistant to talk to Google Assistant. And so this opens up the world of possibilities a little bit more. If I were you, I would go and thumb through Google Assistant, check out the integrations that it has. If there's been a case in the past where Home Assistant didn't natively support something that you wanted, then I would seriously consider pursuing this video and getting everything set up. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Google Assistant or you haven't used it before, it is arguably, in my opinion, better than Siri and better than Alexa. And that's just from personal experience, but that is a little bit controversial, so I'll let Y'all debate that in the comments below. Anyways, let's just dive right into this. Okay, so go ahead and log into your Home Assistant instance. And the first thing that we're gonna do is ensure that we have a way to edit our configuration.yaml file later. Uh, so go ahead and install the file editor add-on if you don't have a way to access the files on your Home Assistant. If you have like a network share set up already, then you can just use that. But for those of us who don't, let's go ahead and install this. While that's installing, we're gonna actually add another add-on which is not present within Home Assistant. I've already done that and cheated, so let me remove it and I'll do it with you. So Home Assistant doesn't naturally support this Google Assistant link that I've been talking about. Uh, to find that, we're gonna go in Google Assistant Relay and we're gonna go to the API PA169 repo here. It's just his username. I'll put a direct link in the description in case you have a hard time finding it. Uh, per his instructions, you're just gonna copy this repo URL from GitHub, go back to Home Assistant, and in the top right, while you're on the add-on store tab, you're gonna click the hamburger menu, click repositories, you're going to paste in the repository URL and press add. Also, I'm realizing that wasn't a hamburger menu technically for those of you who caught that. Anyways, uh, once it's added, uh, you'll see it show up under the add-on store and you'll see assistant relay here. We're gonna go with the uh, stable release, not the beta. So choose that first add-on and press install and then press start. Let that spin up and go ahead and start your file editor add-on that you've also installed. Make sure that you check off show and sidebar. Also, if I'm going too fast, you can change the playback speed on YouTube or just rewind. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to keep this video concise. All right, so now we have file editor in the sidebar. The add-on's running. We have assistant relay installed. The add-on is running. Let's check the log and let's see what it's all about. So in here we can see uh, that it has been initialized. It's given us instructions on configuring it. Um, so it's telling us to go to port 3000, but you'll notice it gives us an IP address that is not within your local network. If you caught that, uh, that is a Docker network IP address. It is not the actual IP address that you need to access. So in your address bar, you're gonna maintain the host name of your Home Assistant instance. So that IP address will not change. Um, However, if you are accessing Home Assistant uh, externally through DuckDNS or through some other service, uh, you're gonna want to switch over to your Home Assistant's local IP address or local DNS name. Anyways, so let's go to port 3000 of the local IP address of Home Assistant. You'll see uh, a new page pull up here for Assistant Relay, the add-on that we just installed, and a separate tab. I'll go and pull this side by side here. I want you to Google uh, Google Console Developer. Uh, sorry, so it's actually Google Developers Console. So go there, and uh, if you've made a project before, it'll probably load up the previous project. If you haven't, um, it may already present you with a create project option uh, or a welcome screen. Well, all we need to do is get to that create project screen. So for me in that case, I just click in the top left here on this drop down menu and I click new project. So just look for that keyword there, new project. We're gonna call this project assistant relay. You don't need to choose a location, press create. Once your project is created, uh, it should load up 
if it doesn't show up, just go to the top menu and then choose the application from your list. For the user type, you're going to choose external, press create. For the app name, just call it assistant relay. For your email, just put your own email for your Google account. Same goes for the developer contact information and then press save and continue. Those are the only fields you need to fill out. Uh, you can press save and continue for the scopes page. For test users, you're going to add again your Google account email address. This authorizes your account to install this application. You may have to press add twice, but once you do, it'll show up here in the table and you're going to press save and continue. And then finally, you're going to go back to dashboard. Okay. So on this overview screen, you'll see publishing status is testing. That is good. Um, you want your test users at one user and uh, user type external was the only choice you could choose. Okay. Left sidebar, you're going to go to credentials. Here, we're going to go create credentials at the top, OAuth client ID, application type, TVs, and limited input devices. Just so that you're not flying blind here, uh, what we're doing is we are creating a Google application, obviously. Um, we are authorizing it access to our Google account, and we are now creating the authorization flow required for Home Assistant to communicate through this app to our Google account. The code base of Assistant Relay, if you want to do your research before you continue, uh, is called Assistant Relay. So if you Google that, it is actually this first repo here. Uh, and you can dive into the code base there and inspect it if you'd like. You can see that it's quite a popular repository that other people have contributed to as well. And um, what, we're, what we installed at Home Assistant was an adapted version of that uh, so that it's compatible with Home Assistant's add-on system. All right, so barreling on ahead, let's call this OAuth client Home Assistant. We're going to press Create. You'll be presented with two codes, the client ID and secret. You can press OK. And instead, what you want to do is under your OAuth client IDs, scroll to the right, look for the download button, and choose that. Now, back on your Home Assistant instance under port 3000 on the Assistant Relay add-on web page, you're going to press Next. You're going to select the file that you just downloaded. And for your user's name, you can just put in your own name, or I'm just going to put me. Actually, I'm going to put Grayson. Then you're going to press Next. You'll be redirected to Google to authorize the Assistant Relay application we just made. Choose your own account. It will tell you that the app has not been verified. That is because it was you who had created it, and it is in a testing phase. But as you will recall, we added ourselves as a testing account, so we are authorized to allow this app to our account. Nobody else will be able to authorize this app, even with that file, under a different Google account because of the test user's restriction. So press Continue. I'm going to press Allow Assistant Relay access to your account. Make sure that's checked and press Allow. Copy the code that you're presented with paste it into the code box here, press finish. Okay, now to test this out, you're gonna go to Sandbox. You're gonna type in your account name that you just added. So I put in Grayson and you can say the message you wanna say. And you can check off broadcast here and then you can press submit and it will broadcast it across your Google Home devices. Uh, if you If you don't have any Google Home devices, you can check off converse here and it will still interact with Google Assistant and in the web page here you will get a prompt uh, with an audio playback of Google's response. Now you'll notice that when we do press submit we're getting this little red X here at the top of the screen. So let's dig in and see why. So go to your home assistant in a separate tab. Go to the supervisor tab. Go to the uh, add-ons that's under your dashboard already. Go to uh, assistant relay and then log at the top. We'll already start to see that there are some errors here. Look for a line that says Google Assistant API has not been used in project. You can do control F and just search for Google Assistant API has not been used, right? 
And you'll see it tells us that we need to enable the Google Assistant API. Conveniently, it also supplies us a link on how to do that. So copy the URL that you see in that message, the full thing. Copy that, paste it in another tab, and check the Enable Google Assistant API button. Go ahead and refresh your Assistant Relay page. Type in your name again and what you want to say. Check off Broadcast and press Submit. All right, so that's cool that I can broadcast something, but what if I want to interact with a device I have configured within Google Assistant or a skill or service that I have added to Google Assistant? All right, so to do that, you're just going to actually type out the command that you would have otherwise just verbally said to Google Assistant. Uh, so like if I just want Google Assistant to turn off my lights, I'll just say turn off my lights and I'll uncheck the broadcast radio button here and I'll press submit. And if I press this little play button here, sure. Turning nine lights on. Sure, turning nine lights on. I can even hear Google's uh, response through Assistant Relay, so that's pretty cool. We've got an Assistant Relay working. It's clearly able to send commands over to Google Assistant, but what does this have to do with Home Assistant? How do we get this to work with Home Assistant, right? That's what we're after. So to do that, it's actually pretty simple. Let's go back to your Home Assistant port. You can now access Home Assistant on uh, you know your external domain if you'd like. Go to the file editor in the file explorer in the top left. Go to your configuration YAML. And I want you to copy exactly what you see on my screen. The only change I want you to make is to change the IP address to be your Home Assistant's local IP address. And in the payload, I want you to change the username to be whatever the name of the account was that you added to Assistant Relay. Everything else should remain exactly the same. Go ahead and pause the video and then play when you're ready. Uh, a couple things to note, these are single quotes using the quote key next to your enter key. Make sure that you're typing it directly into the editor. In other words, make sure you're not doing this in a Word document and then pasting it into here or something like that because Word will actually change these little quote marks to be curved in the uh, to encapsulate the word. So it'll actually change the type of quote to uh, not be a completely vertical quote and Home Assistant won't know how to read that. Uh, one other thing to note is that the indentations here that I've done are two spaces. So this is two spaces, this is four spaces, and this is four spaces. Anyways, once you have this squared away, press the save button and then configuration, go to server controls and restart your Home Assistant. All right, so let's do an automation test. Let's go to configuration. Let's go to automations, click add automation. And let's start with an empty automation and we're gonna call this Google Assistant test. Scrolling down to your triggers, let's just choose um, a time of day for the sake of this example. I'm going to put uh, 7.01 p.m. For the actions, you're going to go to action type call service. In the service drop down, you're going to type rest underscore command. There you'll see your assistant relay command uh, pop up that you configured. And in the service data field, you're going to put uh, message colon space and then in quotation marks, double quotation marks, you're going to say what the message is that you want to send to Google Assistant. So turn off all the lights. Okay. That looks good. Go ahead and press save. And let's just go ahead and run this and see if it works. Sweet. So it just turned off the lights. I'm going to say turn on all the lights. Press save. Press execute again. Boom. All the lights came on. So now we can see Home Assistant is able to send any command we need to over to Google Assistant. Now, as awesome as this is, realize that Home Assistant can now talk to your Google account directly. So almost any command you can send to your Google Assistant, Home Assistant can also send. So if Home Assistant were ever compromised, somebody could use this REST command that we've added to Home Assistant to 
essentially inject any sort of command to your Google Assistant. It is up to your discretion whether or not you want to use this. I feel like it's worth it. Just make sure that your Home Assistant security is tight. Uh, I would enable multi-factor authentication. Um, if you aren't sure how to do that, it's just a quick Google. If you ever decide that you don't wanna keep this integration set up, just uninstall the add-on, uh, remove that line from your configuration file, and then go back to the Google Developers Console to your application here. You'll click the menu in the top right. You'll go to Project Settings, and then you can shut down the project uh, through this. So now we can have Home Assistant send any sort of command to Google Assistant. I'm excited to see what sort of automations y'all come up with. Definitely share them below. Share any ideas. Uh, if you need any help with anything, just let me know. And uh, on another note, thank you guys for the feedback so far. I know it's been a little bit since the last video. I can't guarantee a certain cadence. I've got a uh, primary job you know, that I'm focused on, but I will try to contribute to you guys uh, and to the community whenever possible. And I do enjoy making these videos. So please rate and comment below. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe because there will be more content coming soon and hopefully just as interesting as this one.